Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first part of the Womenhood series. It is such a privilege for me to introduce Leisha to you all from Adasa Healing Oils. Um, welcome, Leisha. Thank you for sharing Abbas Heart with us today and for being a willing instrument in his hands. We are very excited for what you are going to share. And so thank you for rising early and um, yeah, welcome. Thank you so much, Lisha. I'm very excited again for today. Every session with you have been um, so special and very timely, um, very, very timely in what the Lord is doing in this season. So I am excited to share about this topic as he leads and I'm excited to see the fruit that it will bear uh, within the eaves and within the bride of Christ. Absolutely. Amen. Thanks so much, Leisha. So you can start for us in prayer and then we can dive in. <laughs> Thank you, Father, that we can come this morning in your name. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day and that we have the privilege to rise early, to meet with you, to seek your heart, Father, to seek your face. Lord, we want to be a people that seek you above all and beyond all. Father, I ask that you would protect the word that goes out, the seed. Father, that you would guard it, that you would shelter it, that you would come and minister on this, on this short piece of information, Lord, that you would come and brood over it and minister to your people a deeper level, in a deeper intimacy in this. And Father, I ask that your will will be done as it is in heaven, so on the earth that your kingdom may come, that your kingdom may come within us, through us, through our seed lines, through our wombs, and Father, that we can be a group of people who stand up and say, Lord, here I am. He named me Abba. May you come and do your will. Come and plant in us the seed, the pure seed of your word and the pure seed of this bloodline that you're producing through us as the gate of life. So we love you and we honor you and we just adore you, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would come and cover this meeting with your shalom and with your revelation, understanding of who you are and of who you have made us to be. In the name of Yeshua, amen. amen. Okay, everybody, I hope, is everybody online? Yes, I think we're so. Gonna... <laughs> okay, so this morning we're going to speak about the gate of life, which is a topic that is very close to my heart for those of you who have attended some of my conferences already. And the gate of life is really something that we as women carry within us and that we established on the earth together with Yeshua, who is mainly the gate of life for all eternity. Um, he was the first established gate of life on the earth. And it is just incredible to be co-workers and co-laborers with him in functioning as a woman, as this gate. So I would like to speak about who you are, um, and I would like to go into the responsibility that we have, the calling, the main calling that we have in producing a pure seed line for the Messiah. Um, everybody has a unique calling, and I think all of us have really got a lot of teaching on who you are and what your calling is and how to walk into your calling. But as a woman, one of our main callings uh, will always be to be a gate of life in generation because you have a womb and you carry a seed line within you. So this is one. I, I want to share a, a very special thing that the Lord told me when I was a little girl that I hope will just uh, minister to your heart. Um, <laughs> I always tell the story of I was a kind of a wild prophet as a, as a young child and uh, I never truly understood my part to play in the world but I had a very deep hunger for the Lord to show me what am I supposed to do here and uh, what is going to be the impact of my life 
I remember as a young child sitting in the car and in the back seat, looking out of the window and asking the Lord Father, what would be the impact that I have in the world? What is going to be the change that I would leave? And as a small child, he spoke this to my heart and he said, I'm going to use you for a lot of big things and you will have a great ministry and there's going to be a lot of wonderful rewards that you will see in the world in your walk of life. But the main biggest calling that I have on your life and the only um, eternal or, or the most eternal calling that you will walk out, the most important calling that you would walk out, because we have a lot of different callings. And we as women, for sure, we managed we manage a lot of different things, I think more than anybody else in the household. And he just spoke to me and he told me the major, most important, for me, the biggest calling on your life will be to produce a pure seed line. And at that time, I didn't understand it, but I knew I was called to be a mother of the nations and to carry a pure seed line. And so for years, I've carried this in my heart and I didn't truly understand what does it mean to, to carry a pure seed line? What does pure seed look like? And what does the filed seed look like? And how do I even carry a pure seed line? Um, and it has come to, to, I'm now married for, I think, six months already. And we've been praying over our seed very intensely in these last few months in preparation for what the Lord wants to do. Um, also within our lives and with the next generation that is um, giving us the major responsibility of rising up and governing and teaching and equipping in this world. And um, it came to a point where I asked the Lord, Father, is it even possible to carry a PSC line? How do I how do I make sure that every single curse and every single thing is broken off of the seed? Because at the end of the day, only you can really plant a pure seed in our womb. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was I was quite anxious, you know, because I take everything that the Lord gives into my hand very seriously. So I was quite anxious about, am I doing enough in cleaning the seed? Am I doing enough in praying over the seed? And I just want to share a bit about how this works and and who we are, just the identity first of who we are and then what we carry. So as a woman, you have a womb, and this womb is a gate of life within you. And you are very, very special in your design because you carry the generations within your womb. And when the Lord speaks to you, he doesn't only speak to you because the Lord speaks in generations. He sees your generations and he sees your seed line within you. And he already speaks to you as if he's speaking to that whole generation. So please, you know, be aware of that because sometimes the Lord tells us things like, you know, he told me as a little girl, you're going to be the mother of the nations. And then I'm thinking, what does that mean? And what does that look like? But for sure, there's something that I carry as a mother that will impact and change the generations forever. So um, it's so important to understand your design in the spirit. Because again, if we understand that design, we understand our function and we can be more effective in what he has called us to do. So you are a gate of life. And that word in Hebrew is chai. It, it's made up of a chet and a yod. And it means life and to, to be a gate. A gate is a place of access, of entry, a place of going in and going out. So when we look at a gate of life in a generation, you as the woman of a bloodline, of a seed line, of a generation, are that gate of life that is supposed to be established over your children and your generations. That means everything that you uh, allow to go through this gate will have access to your generations. Everything that you tolerate will go through to your generations. Everything... You know, every strong man that sits within that gate will have access to your children. And this is really the scary part because we truly have a very big responsibility. And at the end of the day, the Lord will come back to us and ask us, but what did you do about it? Because I positioned you as the gatekeeper over this generation.
So we have a major responsibility to clean up the bloodline and to pray over the seed line and to pray into the seed and into these generations. So if there is strongholds and idolatry and idols within the bloodline and within these gates of your life, then they do have access to your generations. And we can see, for an example, I'm just going to use David. He was truly a man of God, and I believe he prayed more than most people I know. And I do believe he had a very, very intimate walk with the Father. And still, because of the sin that he allowed in his life, and that was present in the gate in his life, that did go over to his next generation. And it had a massive impact on their calling. And it had, had a massive, massive impact on the world that the Lord wanted to establish on the earth. And you will see in scripture every time that the father wanted to straighten up the bloodline for, for the preparation of the Messiah, for the Messiah to be able to come through the bloodline. He used women that he established in the bloodline to produce the pure seed line that was truly functioning with him in governing over this bloodline and one of my favorite examples um you know there's so many and, and i really don't think we can take one out and say she's more important than the other but tamar is really a very very special example to me because if you look at her life everything that happened to her was absolute horrific she was um, in a position where she had her first husband, who the Lord gave to her, and she was truly faithful to the Lord, truly seeking his face, truly obedient. And he wasn't um, found worthy to carry the seed line. And the Lord, he wasn't found righteous, and the Lord removed him. The Lord removed him out of her life. And imagine the trauma that she had to go through trusting the Lord, fully trusting the Lord and him taking away something that was so special to her. And then she had her second husband. And again, she did everything right. She followed his, his ways. She, um, I mean, she was the perfect wife and he wasn't found righteous at the end of the day to produce the seed line that the Lord wanted for her life. And he removed her, or, or sorry, the Lord removed him out of her life. And then she was in a position where she knew the calling of the life in her, on her life. And she had a choice to, she had to make a choice what she would do. And it's such an interesting story for me, because if you read the ancient scriptures, it shows, you know, I'm, I'm not a reader of the Talmud, but if you go and search her in the Talmud, you'll see <laughs> that they explained that she was one of the most righteous women found in the history. And if you look at her name, it means the date or the date, um, uh, yeah, the date. So Tamar was oh, the palm tree which carries the date. So Tamar was a representation of Israel, of the nation of Israel. And just as we now are a representation of the bride of Christ, and we represent him, she really represented the Messiah. And um, she had to produce a pure seed line. And she knew that this was the calling of the Lord on her life, but every single thing came against her. I always say your biggest battle is what your calling is. And we really have to come in a place of overcoming that for the father to do his will because the enemy knows what the calling is and he will want to make sure that everything is in place for you not to do that. So at the point of giving up, she had, she got wisdom from the Lord and um, you know, the story and, and she acted as if she was a prostitute and she went to Judah and they um, bore a son and there was a bloodline going forth out of her. Now in the world's view, that would have looked like absolute ridiculous. Um, how can somebody act as if they're a prostitute and, you know, try and, and have their will and their way? And if you read the ancient scriptures, it actually shows that everything she done was done out of perfect righteousness. 
even though out of the world's view, it was absolutely ridiculous. So who we are as a woman is so special. You have more authority to pray over your bloodline and your seed line. If we look at Timothy, such a special example, Paul told Timothy, Timothy, you know what I see in you? I see a grandmother who prayed for you. He didn't say, I see a grandfather who prayed for you. So what, I'm not saying a grandfather doesn't have authority. Absolutely. But there is something extremely special about being a gate of life in a generation. Because the authority that you carry and the power that you have in the spirit in what you establish in your seed line and in your generations is super profound. So Timothy probably walked in his calling because of that grandmother who prayed over him, who prayed over the seed line, who prayed into her generations. And what I would love for you to start doing if you don't have children yet is to pray over your seed and to pray over your generations and ask the Lord, where are there still stuff to be sorted out? Where are there strongholds that I need to clean up? Where are there um, altars that I need to clean up? Where are there um, iniquities that still need to be sorted out. And then not only sorting out the bad, but also speaking in the word of God and the promises of God and the blessings of God and the restoration of God. So praying over your seed daily. And I would actually want to ask you to set a timer and to have a session that is only uh, allocated to this, a focused prayer session that is only allocated to praying over your seed. Maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day, what the Lord presses on your heart and the time that he presses on your heart. heart. To, it's very early. To lay your hands on your womb, over your seed, with anointing, you can use anointing oil. I usually use frankincense and myrrh blend, which I explain a lot in how it restores and reprograms the seed. And then I start praying. And then you can ask the Lord, what is the promises that he has over this generation? And to create a journal. I would love for you to create a book only allocated to your generations. And you can say in that book in the front, Oma Lisha, praying of you know, Mama, Mama Lisha, or whatever you want to call it, and pass that journal on to your children and to their children and to their children with the promises and with the Lord of the of God over this generation. And then you start praying scripture. Ask the Father, okay, Lord, what do you want me to pray into? What are the calling of this generation? What what do they need that I can ask? for a generational platform, a trading platform, a heavenly platform for these children to walk on. Something I'm seeing always, everywhere I'm going in um, in our world currently is that the enemy has stolen most of the generational inheritances. And this is also something on my heart to restore the generational inheritance because the generational inheritance builds the platform for children to be able to walk in their callings. And we can look at finances and most of you will agree that there is a lot of inheritances that have been stolen. I mean, if you just look at a king, uh, you know, a kingdom, uh, a kingly bloodline, if you were born in a kingly bloodline, what would be the generational inheritances passed on to you? Your life would look completely, completely different. They would be um, land. They would be property. They would be, giftings they would be um trust funds with things that you can use in order for you to establish your calling and to walk into your calling and scripture says um in in proverbs a lot of time that the old should should give an inheritance to the young not the young should make sure they have enough money to to uh, look after their mother and their father which is wonderful and we do that and it's, a, it's an honor to do that but that it says the the fathers and the mothers is supposed to create a generational inheritance for their children. So what is the generational inheritance that you would create as a mother and as a gate of life over your generation? Because that is far more worth any money, any trust, is a is a pure bloodline and a pure seed line and a, a grandmother that prayed over that seed line. 
So create a journal and start writing. And if the Lord gives you a name of a child, write down that name and write down that calling that you feel. The Lord has already started to speak to me about this next generation. He's already started showing me, um, it's very personal, but my children and some of them and their names and what they are called to do. And so then you start praying much more specific. You know, don't just pray, oh, Lord, protect the seed and cover the seed. I want you to pray specifically on what they need. Ask the Lord for the mentors they need to rise up. Ask the Lord for the resources they need in the times that we are going to go into, because this is a very special generation that will follow. This generation, I believe with my whole heart, hasn't been seen on the earth yet. It is the pure seed line, the pure bloodline that the father wants to produce within his pure bride for the times that we are going to go into. These are the children that will walk on the earth, but they will also walk in the heavens at the same time. They will truly bring the heavens onto the earth. They are truly going to be going into their callings at a very young age, and we will have the privilege to mother them and to father them and to teach them. And uh, there's so much that they will teach us. There is so much that we will know of the Lord and understand of him out of our mindsets of religion that they will be teaching us. So um, I'm, I feel like a voice this morning in the wilderness crying out for, for what the Lord wants to do. And this is something that I have seen happening and it's very rare. And the father also trusts a handful of people with these children. I don't believe these are children that are going to be all over every single person having this. I do believe that it is the bride that he has prepared, that he has worked in, that he has cleansed and sanctified, that will carry the seed for the next generation. And so um, what is our time? We still have 10 minutes. I want to quickly uh, read to you a scripture that the Lord gave me this morning. It's Psalm 24. And it says, it talks about the gate, lift up your, your heads or your gates, and you all know the scripture very well. But just before it, it says the following, this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. And then it says, lift up your heads or your gates and be lifted up you everlasting doors. This is you. And the, uh, and the king of glory shall come in. This is Yeshua entering in through you as the gate into this generation, restoring the pure sea line. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, O everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. And it continues. So let's look at that first sentence. This is the generation who seeks him and who seeks your face. So how do we produce a pure seed line and how do we carry a pure seed line? Only through a face-to-face -face relationship with the Father. Only through seeking the Lord earnestly and through going into, through the veil, into the Holy of Holies, where we look upon him and where we change according to who he is. Our DNA and our seed can only change through an intimate relationship with him and through the word, reading the word, reflecting the word, looking into the word as if into a mirror. And as it is written to recode what is the record of your body, because your body, the record that you carry, it carries over to that seed. It carries over to that generation. So everything that is present in your body and in your seed at the time of conception and in the time of that baby in the womb will be carried over as a tape recorder to that baby. This is so, so important to understand the responsibility you have to clean up your house, to make sure that your body, which is the gateway, is cleaned, body, soul, spirit. Everything that is stuck in the spirit, the traumas, the wounds, the, the record of those wounds carry over to your children. And there's so many studies that look into this. We have a study found, it's called the Cherry Blossom Experiment, where they took a few mice. And I've thought a lot about this. I'm just going to reference it quickly because it's very deep to, to understand the impact you have. 
And that which you don't deal with will be passed on. That which you don't um, sh make sure you cut off, that you don't clean the record off in your body, you will carry over into their lives. And sure, they can figure it out. And sure, there's grace for it. And they can work it out as well. Absolutely. But the time it will take for them to work it out and for them to actually go around the mountain again. It's just the time. We don't have that time anymore. We really have to be the ones rising up early to pray into these gates to clean it up. So let's look at the cherry blossom experiment quickly. And you can go and do some research on this as well in your own time. And there it, sh it shows an experiment with, that they did with two groups of mice. And um, the one group, they, well, let's look at the one only. They uh, had them drink water. And every time they drank water, they shocked them. So they associated a shock with the drinking of water. And I always say this is just a, a normal record of trauma that you have gone through, you know. You had a burglar um, uh, come into your house and it was a shock on you and your body reacted to that. And so they did it a few times. And as they shocked this mice, they uh, their cortisol levels, which is their stress levels in their bodies, spiked. And they took away the shock and they had these mice drink water without any trauma delivered to their bodies. And every time these mice drank water, they had a spike in cortisol because they had the record of the trauma written in their body. And so this record is written in the cells of your body. It is written in the amygdala. It is written in the central nervous system. And this record is now only still in your body. But now this record starts to program your seed and it starts to influence your seed. And so they tested their little, they had them... Um, get babies and they had the babies drink water without ever shocking those little baby mice <laughs> and the baby's cortisol levels spiked every time as a body response to what was written within their seed and they saw that this happened to the third and to the fourth generation of that little mice from that one mother and father that was shocked so when is it the third generation and when is it the fourth? I always, always, um, I also always had this question that I asked the Lord. How do I know which is the third and which is the fourth generation? So if you are a mother carrying a daughter within you, if you are pregnant with a girl, you are carrying two generations within your womb because she has already within her as a fetus, the full seed line of that next generation. This is super important because you are carrying, you are speaking into, you are having dominion over two whole generations and the programming of two whole generations within your womb. That means everything you speak, everything you create with your words, if it is curses or if it is life, will have effect in two generations, not only one. If you are carrying a boy, it's only, um, you know, you're only carrying one generation. So then it's to the third. But the girls are to the fourth because you're carrying an extra generation in your womb. So um, I, I just want to correct that. If you are pregnant with a girl, you're speaking into four generations because there's an extra one. If you are pregnant with a boy, you're speaking into three generations, just as a one line, um, you know, gateway. So what you will choose will affect those children and it will affect their children and it will affect their children. What you believe will have an effect on them. What you eat will have an effect on them. What you pray will have an effect on them. This is one of the biggest responsibility and the highest calling that the Lord has given women to clean up a bloodline and to make sure that the plans and the will that the Father has can happen and can be established on the earth as you mother and as you care for these children. So the word uh, blood is so special for me. I've just looked at that uh, last night. And the function of blood. In the womb, your baby is receiving all of your blood. You are 
nurturing this baby with your lifeblood, the record of your body. And your blood carries your life and it speaks about the record of everything you carry. There's messages in the blood. The blood carries a message and the blood gets transferred into that baby's little body and their blood also gets transferred into your body and it also leaves a record within your body. So the word blood start in, in Hebrew, um, in Hebrew it's the word dam and the first letter is dalet, which means door, gateway, doorway. So within the blood that you carry, within the record that you carry, there is this door of access. And who is the door? It is Yeshua, the Messiah. Uh, if we look at John 10, he is the door to everlasting life. And then the second letter in this word is Samech, very special letter. You can go and read this up. And I'm sorry, I don't have a PowerPoint to explain this to you this morning. Our session is just way too short. But um, please go and look at the, the deeper meaning of the word blood. The door into the eternal life, into everlasting life. And what is that? It is your generational line and the seed line you carry. What will be the record that you leave, the imprint that you leave on this seed line? And um, I pray that the Lord will, will speak to you and minister to you personally out of the seed line that you come out of, out of the destruction that you come out of, to be a restorer and to be a rebuilder and to be a gate of life that breaks the strongholds of death over your generation. I don't know if you have questions, but this has been very short. It's just a quick <laughs> introduction into the gate of life. Sure. Thank you, Leisha. This was so powerful. I And there's so many valuable things that you shared and that I just wanted to write down. So thank you for that. Um, yes. Is there anyone, maybe we have time for one or two quick questions. Is there anyone that has a question for Leisha? Okay. Tamara has a question. Yes. Hi, good morning, Lehi. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, um, okay, so if you're like myself and you've already got children um, and you are having kids that are of age to actually get married and have their own children, um, so my daughter is going to be listening to your recording. She's just driving to work at the moment, um, but yeah, she's already experienced a miscarriage, but I believe that even that baby had purpose um, only after 10 weeks old to bring life into her you mentioned that the 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 blood transfers from the life transfers from the baby to the mother as well um baby was only 10 weeks old uh so i think it was a bit young before baby's blood was mixing with mom's blood but there was definitely a transfer of life that i've noticed um because i had a dream and god actually showed me Abba showed me that the reason why baby came in the picture was to bring life into the, to my daughter's life because she actually was half dead. I don't know if it was spiritually or, or what, but there is definitely a spiritual transference as well. And I've heard of how um, there are also um, people that have made maybe illnesses that are incurable. And when they've been pregnant, the baby actually heals their cells. So I know that there was definitely a purpose in little Amara's life. And um, it's been beautiful to look at her name and see, like you said in the Hebrew, each letter what it means, because there's a story of her life and a function in her name. So definitely the names are very important. Um, but what I wanted to ask is, as a mom that is now got children that I'm past childbearing age, um, can I still prophetically pray for for my generation through my womb, um, lay hands on my womb for my children that are already born out of, because I have three children that are all firstborns. I've got a firstborn daughter, then I've got a firstborn son, and then my next marriage, I have another firstborn son. Um, so there is definitely a firstborn theme, and there's been such an attack on my daughter um, with her seed, but I've done training and I actually was able to bless and her seed to make it holy before she fell pregnant with her first child. Um, 
So I know that the Lord was guiding me already in this before even I knew she was going to fall pregnant or anything, but I just had the sense to do it when I got the training. Um, so it's a little bit, this is all new to me, but I, sorry, my, my basic question is how do, what is my role? Um, as it's not my decision of what happens to my daughter and her body and her decisions and, you know, with my sons. I think uh, this is an amazing question. And I think I can answer this question very lengthy. If I, I love to answer these questions out of um, experience, out of what the Lord has taught me and shown me, because then I know there's truly authority and revelation in it. Um, so as a grandmother, we, you're actually now called a grandmother because you do have a little one in heaven. Um, as a grandmother, you have absolute authority over a, the gate in the generations. So you have authority to pray over the bloodline still and over the womb, the womb, your womb and over your seed line because this is the, this is the continuation of your seed line. Um, she, your daughter, must also pray for sure because she has now her own responsibility and her own choices that she has to be, um, you know, responsible for before the Lord. If she was below or under the age of 12, 13, you could have prayed and broken off different things over her that, you know, she didn't have to do herself, but she still now as an adult has to pray. Um, over her seed line and over her sins and over those things. But you can pray over the generational iniquity, the generational blessings, the generational um, position uh, of the seed line. So yo, I can actually answer this question so long. I have a story to tell, but it's going to take me at least 15 minutes to explain it. Um, because it's quite lengthy, but it was a special thing that the Lord showed me the impact that one grandmother has on a generation. So as you are seated as a grandmother governing over the seed line, not over your daughter's life, but over the seed line, for sure you can pray and for sure you can bless and uh, ask the Lord for scriptures, for creating a spiritual platform for these children and for the generation that she will carry um, to, to be pure and to be cleansed and for them to walk in whatever the Lord has called them into. Regarding the, the statement you made, I'm not sure if that was a question of um, that that baby bring life into her, for sure. For sure there was life because she, that was an, the moment conception took place, there was an opening up of the gate of life within her. And, um, and there was for sure a transfer from the baby to the mother as well. So there's been an amazing study done that I can, I'm not sure what the name of the study is. I'll have a look at it. Um, but that showed how these cells of these babies that you carry start healing your body. And they're like cells, stem cells stored in your body. And when you're sick, they go and restore the immune system or they go and attack a virus. And the, the baby actually fight for, in the mother's body for her health, which is very, very special. Thank you so much, Lichai. Shalom. Shalom. I don't know if anybody else has a question. Um, doesn't look like it. There was just a few comments in the comment section saying also thank you. Um, great reminder and beautiful message. So yes, thank you for this morning, Lisha. And we also thank our Father for the revelation that he brought this morning, for the seeds that he planted this morning. And may all of those seeds really take root and grow as it is watered with the Spirit. Um, may Abba also bless each and every one that heard this message today and each and every one that will hear this message in future. And may this responsibility that we have as women really sink in and may we start this journey um, of praying for our generational lines, of praying for our bloodlines, and may Abba Father um, in his miraculous way really come to cleanse and purify this generation because I'm excited with you for what he's going to do through this next generation. May he also bless you 
and your ministry and Adasa Healing Oils and the work that you are doing um, for this next generation and for the nations as the mother of the nations. And may he continue to reveal your calling to you as you boldly walk in it daily. Because I know, um, yes, we do have our calling and we know what our calling is. And Abba Father reveals the treasures of our calling to us. But it's also a constant process of seeking him intimately and um, drawing close to his heart on a daily basis. Absolutely. So if I can just leave one thing with you, pursue a face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord. And in pursuing him, he will show you where you can pray into and what you can pray. I don't want you to just pray out of yourself, just, you know, praying anything. Mm -hmm. Really seek his face over this generation and then start praying as he leads you because then the DNA will restore face-to-face -face with his word coming in and restoring the foundations uh, that is laid already within you. Mm -hmm. um, so in the next session, we will look at, I believe it's going to be next week, we will look at the physical part, the hormonal part of the, of the woman, which is so important because these things are hand in hand, and um, how to restore the body heal the body to carry uh, to carry this, how to heal and restore the womb, how to cleanse the womb, and how in that process, how to clean on a physical level also the record that is within the seed. Awesome. Thanks, Leisha. Looking forward to it. Have a blessed week, everyone. Shalom, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.